Interchange is the name of a new HS2 station being constructed to the east of Birmingham, adjacent to Birmingham Airport, the NEC and Birmingham International Railway Station. The four-platform station, located in a triangular section of land between the A452, the M42 and A45, will be connected to Birmingham Airport and Birmingham International by way of an automated people mover, which I'll discuss in a little bit more detail shortly. Currently, there isn't a great deal to see in terms of construction on the site of what will be the station, but the prep work has certainly come a long way since I last visited almost two years ago, and a lot of work has been carried out to modify the roads around the station, with some key bridges and structures already constructed and in use. A lot of work has focused on and around the A452 and A446 to the north of the station, a new roundabout has been constructed that will link the A452 entry exit slips to a new link road to the A446 and to a roundabout that serves the NEC and B4438. The new roundabout will also provide vehicle access to the new station. I've studied plenty of maps and images of the roads and where HS2 crosses them, but actually driving around the area and driving on the new infrastructure highlights the challenges engineers have faced trying to weave HS2 around over and under existing road infrastructure, which there is a lot of in the area. Within the space of just a few miles, the new line must cross the A45 Coventry Road, plus the link roads to the A452, after which there will be a new 415 metre long station, then heading away from the station, the tracks pass underneath the new A456 link roundabout, and then almost immediately crosses above the M42. I recorded some footage to give you an idea of what some of the new infrastructure looks like on the ground. This first clip is heading south from the new link roundabout above what will be the new HS2 tracks onto the new A452 entry slip. This next clip is heading north on the A452 as it becomes the A446, passing under the new slip road and old redundant southbound entry slip onto the A452. And this final clip is the exit slip from the main A452, which connects with the roundabout above HS2. To the south of the station, where HS2 passes underneath the A45 and two link roads, it is possible to see a new bridge that is under construction that will be used to divert east way over HS2, which provides an eastbound link from Junction 6 on the M42 to the A45 and A452. Work can be seen on the opposite side of the A45 to divert the westbound east way, then a new bridge that will carry the A45 over HS2 will also have to be constructed. The early works for the road alterations were carried out by Lango Rourke and Jay Murphy and Sons, however the main works are being carried out by a Balfour BT Vinci joint venture known as BBV, whilst the £370 million contract to deliver the station itself was awarded to Lango Rourke, who were awarded the contract back in July last year. The new station, that will be long enough to accommodate 400 metre long trains, will be comprised of two island platforms, providing four platform faces. This configuration will mean it will be possible to separate stopping trains to and from Birmingham from the non-stopping trains heading to and from the north. 
It is proposed that some trains from the north will stop at Interchange, but early proposals suggest that only one of the three trains per hour from Manchester will stop at Interchange, whilst the stopping service from Scotland calling at Interchange en route to Euston is dependent on a link similar to Goldbourne being delivered. Without a northern link to the West Coast mainline beyond Crewe, there won't be enough capacity for the proposed additional service from Scotland, so it is yet another reminder of how crucial Goldbourne link or something similar is. The station itself, which will be just 38 minutes from London and 9 minutes from Birmingham city centre via HS2 services, is set to pave the way for massive growth plans in the area, and will be at the forefront of plans for a huge mixed-use development that will support 30,000 jobs and support the construction of 3,000 new homes and 70,000 square metres of commercial space. As mentioned previously, the new station will be connected to Birmingham Airport, Birmingham International Railway Station and the NEC by an automated people mover. The 2.3km system that will be similar to the Luton Dart will provide services every 3 minutes and will whisk passengers to Birmingham Airport in just 6 minutes, with stops at the NEC and International on the way. The track for the People Mover will be built on a viaduct that will cross the M42 and Pendigo Lake situated to the east of the NEC. The new line will then cross the West Coast Main Line and then head west to the airport. It hasn't yet been decided if the people movers will be self-propelled or cable driven, but much of the design work for the viaducts and stations is already well underway, with key decisions such as the construction material already taken. The deck for example will be constructed out of weathering steel which has a rusty appearance, whilst the pier supporting the deck will be made out of reinforced concrete. In order to reduce costs the system will mostly be single track with sections of double track just before interchange and from the NEC to International. To achieve a 3 minute frequency, a minimum of 4 vehicles will be required. The automated people mover will not only mean passengers will be able to quickly reach the airport, but will also provide a rapid and convenient link for passengers wishing to change between HS2 and existing services via the West Coast Main Line, which will provide connections to intermediate stations between International and Coventry, and stations between Birmingham New Street and International. So that's just a little bit of background information about Interchange and some of the progress so far. I hope to return later this year to see if any progress has been made on the site and update you on any major developments in 2023. Now that I've covered all four of the new HS2 stations and provided some background information, any future videos will provide construction updates and I'm hoping to have revisited all four of the stations again before the year ends. I hope you found this video informative, if you have please hit that like button and consider subscribing, but I'm going to leave it there for today, so until next time, bye bye.